So let's start at the absolute beginning. What is oil paint? I'm going to assume you are familiar with the idea that there are different types of paint, the big three being watercolor, acrylic, and oil. What these different types of paint all have in common is something called pigment. Pigment is a ground up dry material that gives paint its color. Pigment can come from a variety of sources, including minerals, metals, and even bugs and snail shells. Some pigments are ancient, some are modern, some natural, and some synthetic. The liquid mixed into this pigment is what determines what type of paint it is. Oil paint is made up of a pigment mixed with drying oil, such as walnut or safflower oil, but most commonly linseed oil. Although we call them drying oils, oil paint doesn't actually dry. It cures or hardens based on a chemical reaction with oxygen. This process is called oxidation. Slow oxidation, or go ahead and call it drying, is a prized characteristic of oil paint. When oil paint stays wet, the artist has more time to manipulate and move the paint. People love working with oils for a lot of other reasons, including rich, bold colors, subtle glazing, the consistency of the paint, the smell, even the connection to history. Now that we've covered a little background information, let's talk supplies. I'm going to guide you through this like you are starting from scratch. It can be daunting walking through an art supply store and figuring out what to bring home with you. So hopefully I can help you narrow it down. I'll have all the links to the supplies I cover in the description to make it as easy as possible for you. First of all, if you're going to be a painter, you are going to need paint. This can be the most overwhelming of all. My advice here is that less is more. I'm going to suggest three different options for a first palette. Palette meaning a collection of colors used at the same time. The first is a monochromatic palette, which essentially means one color. In this case, titanium white and lamp black are a good way to start because really you don't have to worry about mixing colors at all. You are just starting to get a feel for the paint and working on your values, which is the lightness or darkness of a shape. If you like bright colors and you want to go ahead and start mixing color, then I would suggest that you get at least a blue, a red, and a yellow. From these primary hues, you can mix your secondary colors, which are orange, purple, and green. If you want really bright secondary colors, you may consider purchasing those separately also. To this list, I would add titanium white, lamp black, and maybe an earth tone like a burnt umber. In the description, you'll find some good starter sets. If you don't want to think too much about it, you can grab one of those. If you are drawn to more muted traditional paintings, I would suggest using the Zorn palette. The Zorn palette includes lamp black, titanium white, vermilion or cadmium red light, either one of those, and yellow ochre. You will see that there are professional paints as well as student grade paints. I always encourage artists to buy the best supplies that they can afford when it comes to paint. Student grade paints contain less pigment than professional grade paints, so you are getting what you pay for. But if professional grade paints aren't in the budget, no worries. You're just getting started. You will be able to do great things with student grade paint, I promise. Next, you'll need a palette. A palette is where you will mix your colors and hold your pile of paints before you brush them onto your canvas. You don't need to run off and buy something fancy. I used paper plates for a while, but eventually you may want something more permanent and less wasteful. Palettes are a personal preference choice. Oil paintings are generally done vertically on an easel or even tacked to a wall, so many artists choose a palette that they can hold up to their canvas or mount next to their canvas. Some like wood, I prefer glass because I can scrape dried paint off of it easier. A palette knife is used to mix paint on a palette and sometimes used like a paintbrush to apply paint directly to a canvas. These come in many shapes, but a medium-sized knife shaped something like this will work well. It's time to talk about my favorite studio friends after my dog, the paintbrushes. Oil brushes come in many shapes and sizes and materials, but they generally are firmer than watercolor brushes so that they can push the heavier paint around the canvas. My favorite brushes are top of the line, but also very reasonably priced. They are from Rosemary & Company, which sells from their website and ships from England. I'll have a link to that also in the description. You can also find plenty of other options at your local art store. 
Make sure you look for brushes that are specifically made for oil paint. It also helps not to get the cheapest brushes. If you find that your brushes aren't holding their shape despite good care, that the ferrule, which is to say the metal part of the brush, is coming loose, or you keep finding stray paintbrush hairs left on your canvas, you should probably upgrade. I would suggest that you get a few different shaped brushes so you can play around with the different types of marks that brushes make. The thing that you're actually gonna paint on is called a support. This is most commonly canvas or linen, but wood and aluminum are also popular choices. What kind of support you use is also a personal preference. The easiest way to get started is to choose something that is ready to paint on straight out of the package. Look for a support that already has been coated with acrylic gesso or lead ground. A good choice may be a pad of canvas sheets. At the bare minimum, you have a paper plate, a couple tubes of paint, a brush, and something to paint on. That could be enough to get you started, but we really should cover a couple more supplies that most oil painters use. Solvents are used to thin paint and clean brushes. Odorless mineral spirits have mostly replaced traditional turpentine. OMS still poses health problems when inhaled, so some artists opt for healthier alternatives such as walnut oil, lavender spike oil, and natural solvent mixtures from various manufacturers. Mediums are anything else that you add to paint to alter the consistency or effect of the paint. Different mediums are used to achieve thicker or thinner paint, gloss, and faster or slower drying. A good first medium may just be a bottle of linseed oil, which is probably what's already in your paint, but it can change the consistency to help it flow a little bit better. Let's talk about safety before you go. Oil painting can be hazardous without understanding the materials you are bringing into your workspace. Several of my favorite paint pigments are toxic. I use gloves and keep food and drink away from my work areas. I also keep my paints behind locked doors when we have guests with small children over. If you don't eat the paint or inhale dry paint dust from sanding, you should be good. If you don't wanna worry about toxic paints though, you can look for alternative. They are usually marked as a hue. So you could have a cadmium red, which is toxic, or you could have a cadmium red hue, which is not only non-toxic, it is also cheaper. I use solvent sparingly, but I am careful to keep my solvent covered as much as possible and have a fan in my studio. Fire safety is also a concern, though I hear a variety of opinions about how much of a concern it actually is. The chemical reaction process of oxidation, what we are loosely calling drying, creates heat. Solvents are flammable. So all in all, there's a good case for using a fire safe trash can in the studio. Once rags are dry, the danger is past. So that should be about all you need to really get started and begin to play around with your first oil paints. If you have any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer them in the comments below. This video is the first of a series where we will tackle a lot of different topics for beginners. So before you go, hit that subscribe button and please leave me a comment letting me know what you would like me to cover next in this series for beginning oil painters.